out here. All right, once more, everybody, good evening. We're going to go ahead and uh, get started with our session on tonight. Welcome to everybody this uh, December the 2nd. Oh, okay. Everybody can see my screen. We'll go ahead and uh, look at that aspect and to see where we are. Again, as you or those who are on Zoom, Again, if you if we've had to mute you, then uh, to unmute and be uh, star six or pound six on your device. As we reimagine our mission TLC square, you remember that um, Sunday, our message referred to uh, kind of our calling and we looked at uh, Isaiah chapter 60. Matter of fact, for our opening scripture, we want to read part of that. Uh, Isaiah chapter 60 verses one and two as uh, you may have your Bibles with you. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth. And big All right, here we go. For the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. And... Um, we give thanks unto the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer as we begin our conversation this evening. Father, we give you thanks, Lord God, just for the blessings of the day, Lord. We thank you for who you are and uh, for bringing us even to another Advent season. We've made it through Wednesday of this week. I thank you for your undergirding and your support of your people. And I just ask your blessings upon us as we um, take the load of 2020 into this Advent season. I thank you that your word encourages us to cast all of our cares upon you. Thank you for caring for us in such a special way. We welcome you into our midst tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, again, the, the this document that uh, we scroll to is a document that you will find. I've emailed it to you. It's also on our group, uh, group me page. And uh, again, if I have your email, you would would have it. And so I really want you to be able to look through this document to maybe use it as some of your meditation and devotional uh, times, um, even as we prepare to move through this Advent season through Christmas 2020, that is a Christmas like none other before. And so we are concerned about our spiritual status and our state. We're concerned about our emotional status, our mental status, our family status. Um, many of you have gone through uh, this Thanksgiving weekend that just passed. And for some of you, it was probably a little bit different, a little bit smaller. And uh, so that was some things that maybe you had to make that particular adjustment to. So my concern as pastor is how we will position ourselves to move through the month of, um, of December with all the news that we're hearing uh, about the pandemic. Uh, the governor was on again today. And so uh, that concern maybe weighs heavier on some minds than others, but the, the, the fact of the matter is there. And so I, I have selected Psalms 23 as a devotional. As you move through dealing with this document and understanding uh, maybe how you can see that it can assist you in uh, processing some things for this Advent uh, season. Uh, hopefully it can be uh, used for you. But I see um, Psalms 23 as a Psalms that reminds us, even as the Lord is our shepherd, on how the Lord is uh, goes on ahead of us. And the Lord was in the year 2020 before any of us were in the year 2020. Uh, so he knew exactly what you and I had to go through, and our calling is to grow close unto him and to trust him uh, as we move through the year. So as we move through the Christmas season, uh, I, I see no difference there for why we should not look 
to the Lord as being our shepherd. And so on your screen, you will see Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes on ahead of us. I shall not want in the year 2020, in the Christmas season 2020. He makes me to lie down in green pastures where there's life, where there is nourishment, where we can be fed. He leads me beside the still waters where we can see the reflection of the enemy as we partake of the nourishment and the freshness of God. He restores my soul. Some of our souls may be a bit weary having to deal with the adjustments uh, since March. And uh, with that weariness, uh, we have confidence that even during this Christmas season, the Lord can restore our soul, all that has been drained out of our soul. He can restore that. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. There are a lot of shortcuts that we can be taking about now, and you may see others taking some shortcuts through life, but when we can be on the path of righteousness, that should give us all confidence. The Psalm continues, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. And so even as we move through the pandemic and move through sickness, disease, uh, coronavirus, as we move through all of this, we can understand and to be assured that uh, we don't have to fear any evil because the Lord is with us. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So even as we move through 2020, the Lord has prepared a table, a table set up with the stuff that we would need to make it. Maybe like some of you guys Thanksgiving table tables that you uh, sat at this past weekend. And so the Lord is preparing uh, his a table for us. You anoint my head with oil. The anointing is that supernatural power on top of our own power and abilities that gives us um, opportunities where we can make it through every assignment, that we can make it through every family issue, we can make it through crisis because of the anointing that the Lord gives us. And our cup runs over. We're in the Lord's presence and he's just pouring in our cups and we're not leaving his presence and just knowing that uh, he, he continues to fill us in wonderful ways. And then that Psalm closed, even as many of you saw, that was our scripture for last night. Surely goodness, absolutely, no doubt, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell, dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So beyond a shadow of a doubt, in this Christmas season, goodness and mercy are following us today and even through Christmas 2020, which becomes uh, the immediate focus of our time together. So that's um, our meditation scripture. As we prepare to ask these five questions, I just lift up five questions for Christmas 2020 as a devotional piece, as a reflection piece to reflect back on what you have been through, what we have been through, and that we can always go back to Psalm 23 that gives us a confident assurance that no matter, no matter how weighty the times may be for us, that the Lord has given us a wonderful uh, presence, his presence being with us. And so now I kind of do some reflecting on 2020 on what you and I have had to deal with in uh, this year of all years. And obviously, since the month of um, March, we have been dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, coming into a greater understanding, uh, not only referring to it as the coronavirus, as there are multiple coronaviruses 
this specific one is known as COVID-19. And as you're hearing about the vaccine that is coming out within a couple of weeks, and uh, we'll be making decisions about uh, where we fall into play with receiving that, uh, that vaccine as we will all do more study and research. And uh, we're grateful for what the scientists are doing. But just think back what you have had to deal with this year. And I've just list a few things. And so as you would take this document, the concept and the idea is that you would tweak it as to what you have had to deal with in the year 2020 as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. We understand the social distancing piece that we hear. And uh, it's so difficult many times to even think about that as it becomes difficult even about the mask, the wearing of masks. And some of you have become creative and stylistic in uh, the mask wearing. Uh, with that. And again, it has to become habit and reinforced. And uh, I still catch myself getting out of my truck, getting ready to go into stores, but getting my mask right there uh, in my truck where I took it off. And uh, again, having to deal with that. Many of us probably thought that we couldn't even breathe if we um, uh, put that mask on. How could we breathe? And we find some ways to take shortcuts when maybe we're in a room when nobody else is in a room as we are away from home. So and you've had to deal with social distancing and masks. We've had to deal with how the schools have approached uh, the pandemic, you know, opening uh, totally virtual now with a hybrid Students and families have choices about whether to keep their students in the virtual academy, what that has meant to schedules, what that has meant to various responsibilities, whether you work in a school, whether you are a parent that has a child there, you know that you've had to deal with that. There have been some tough decisions that have had to be made as uh, we look at our school situation. There are those of you who are working from home. And so you find time to work at home. One of the key pieces that we've heard in that is that there have been many people who have accomplished more working from home than they did on their job. So that was an interesting piece. And then understanding that with many jobs that are not able to work from home, then they are even in the midst of the pandemic and in the midst of the virus because of the type of work that they have to do. You've had to deal with finances. Um, uh, some are unemployed, some have been laid off. Uh, maybe there have been some cutbacks and uh, maybe there's just been added expenses, but that's something else we have to de had to deal with. We've had to deal with the medical field challenges as they are still coming up the speed up to speed seemingly every month and how we deal with that and even how some of us have to go to the doctor. Some go to the doctor via phone or via, um, uh, Facebook or, or something along that lines. Obviously, the next we have to move, we have to deal with the political discourse of the year 2020, a year of all years. We've had to deal with Facebook. Many of you have had to learn how to maneuver and to operate and even get an account on Facebook. And it becomes so necessary. Uh, again, some have had to just drop the understanding that I'll never do that. But it is the main piece where churches are able to minister online. And so there is that uh, familiarity that we've had to gain with Facebook and also texting, able to text. Again, I, I still get some calls, not so many, but asking various questions. And my answer is, did you check the text message that I sent out? Uh, because uh, typically the answer would have been in that text message. So we've had to deal with that, checking our phones and our messages more than we have ever had. You could say, I'll never do it. Well, you're gonna be left out in that regards. And so we want to be wise as serpents, as the scripture says, and how we maneuver. Obviously with all of that Facebook text messaging, there you see there've had to be church adjustments, adjustments in how we at New Life have carried out and carried through and making decisions. There have been adjustments 
that no doubt did not please everyone and is not pleasing everyone. But there is that adjustment and we're calling forth the love of the Lord. We're calling forth understanding. I'm going to deal with a little bit of that in just a moment. And then the Zoom world, several of you are Zooming right now and learning how to do Zoom and add the app and work through some of the situations as far as muting, unmuting, and all of that. And then we've had, I listed these last two here, we've had to deal with compliant people and non-compliant people. Some of us naturally, we, we like to see compliant. Oh, social distancing, you've got to have the mask on. And, and those of us who are compliant and we see other folks who are carefree and careless, then that has kind of nerved us up. And we've had to learn how to deal. In that instance, non-compliant people. But if you're non-compliant, you've had to deal with the compliant individuals. And so all of that comes into play. So dealing with COVID-19, reflect. I want you to take the document and through... Uh, your time in the coming week, reflect on how you specifically maybe have had to deal with COVID-19 and then dealing with the hurricane disasters and damages. Uh, again, we heard from Mary's Harris a couple of weeks ago and even how for the first time in her life, 70 years, she's had to live in an apartment and trying to find a contractor to help rebuild her home that was destroyed there in the Lake Charles area. But it's touch bases even with some of us. I've had to replace my, my roof last month as uh, Hurricane Delta blew away enough shingles. And so dealing with the hurricanes and then dealing with depression and, and uh, medical health uh, concerns or uh, I should say that should be mental health concerns and uh, having to deal with uh, the mental health concerns. And so I'm concerned about that, uh, even with some of our personal health, but even there's concern that you and I may have with our family's mental health and depression, or maybe some of our coworkers in their mental health and their depression. Uh, sometimes we're not aware of when we are depressed or how we are mentally drained. And uh, sometimes we have to take on a little bit of of, of, of more mental intelligence to know the reason why we're snapping at our coworkers so much, why we're snapping at our families so much. And there could be some backstories to that. Part of the reasons that reason that in two Wednesday nights on the 16th of uh, December, uh, I have asked Brother Randy Fontenot, who is a uh, who is a counselor and has his own practice. Uh, counseling practice there in the Baton Rouge area to make a presentation to us about mental health concerns and depression during the pandemic and particularly as we are in the midst of the holiday seasons and some of the things that we are missing, some of the things that maybe we longed for or didn't realize how much we appreciated them until they were removed from us. And maybe some of you are dealing with the heaviness, the weight of additional work responsibilities or uncertainties around work. And maybe those of you who have younger children and not able to uh, do some things that you would typically do with your children during Christmas and trying to explain some things to them. So I've asked Brother Randy to make a presentation unto us to help us maneuver and to track uh, our mental health concerns, not just ours, but as we deal with others, who may have some mental health concerns. So that's the overall picture as we begin to look at our questions, five questions. And I wanna walk through them, but again, the document is for you to look through, or maybe you're even taking notes tonight on some things that you need to look at. The first question that I, uh, I lift up for Christmas 2020, what, ha what have been your biggest challenges in 2020. Some of them can be listed above, but for you to list two or three or four, even more of your challenges as a reflection, uh, again, I think that it will be a good exercise for us to be strengthened in a whole lot of different areas rather than 
you're running forth, entering into 2021 without having appropriately expressed or dealt with some things. Sometimes it helps us just to express some of our feelings, our emotions, our frustrations, uh, even as we see in the 23rd Psalms, as we can understand that if nothing else, we can go to the Lord and to express unto him uh, what we are feeling. So what have, question number one, your biggest challenges in 2021 that may involve you sitting down with a calendar, looking through the calendar and uh, seeing what have you had to deal with and just remembering some things. Somebody may say, oh, I just want to forget everything about 2020. If we don't appropriately deal with some things, I feel, uh, in, a, in a manner that's healthy and healing, we're bound to repeat them at, at some time, at some place. And so that's question number one that I lift up. Question number two is what has helped you most to get through 2020? Where we're now, we're December the 2nd. There are but 29 days left in the year 2020. <clears throat> And as we started the year 2020, some of you said, oh, yeah, there is perfect vision in 2020. It's going to be a year of awesome blessings. And we've experienced what we've just got through speaking about. But what has helped you get through 2020? I think everybody that's on the call tonight, you're still with us. <laughs> you're still alive. So you have gotten through this particular point. And I just list some areas, some general things. But I want to ask you to be even more specific. So I can list the category of faith. What about your faith has helped you most? Has it been your faith has been growing, that you have taken the time and the opportunities to grow? Or maybe it's about the statements you're able to make daily as you go through the challenges that, that I am the head and not the tail. Statements like, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So specifically in, in your faith, what about your faith has helped you? Maybe what has helped you has been your finances that you were able to put away for a rainy day or that you have been blessed by your job. Sometimes we take so much for granted until it's taken away from us. So in, in finances, what has helped you get through? Has it been appropriate planning in years going by? Or just again, has it been your work situation? The next category is that of family. How has your family helped you get through 2020? What family member, what relationship, what interactions uh, have helped you get through 2020? The next thing I list is that of free time. And uh, for some of you, there have been some free time given to you. You didn't have to go to work or maybe you were laid off from your jobs or maybe you just had more free time. You used to go and visit so-and-so. You used to go and go shopping left and right and you were always moving. You would make those runs to Walmart at 11 o'clock at night at 12 o'clock at night and now Walmart is closed at that particular time. What are you doing in your free time and what in your free time has helped you? Fun. What, 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 maybe you have had some fun things to do that uh, have helped you get through the year 2020. Maybe you've watched more movies. Maybe you've watched some of our, Ju uh, our, our Zoom movies that have been shown. I don't know, maybe you've done some things for fun. Maybe it's the media or social media that has helped you get through 2020. If you watch too much of the news channels, that probably didn't help Sorry, you. Sorry, I'm having uh, trouble hearing you. It uh, probably entertained you a little bit more in that. But maybe some of you have found yourselves more on social media. Link, link. I mean, New Life now has an active social media page and a group me page. And there are things that are put on there continually. Maybe something about church has helped you get through 2020. Think about that. Be specific about what about church has helped you. Maybe it's about work your work environment or something about that that has helped you. And maybe there are hobbies, hobbies that you've had or maybe old hobbies or new hobbies that uh, you have taken with you. Uh, so new hobbies 
uh, that maybe have helped you get through 2020. Question number three, what changes in people have you noticed in the year 2020? Changes in people in general or people around you? Now you're taking the view off of yourselves in a sense and looking at the world around you. What changes spiritually have you seen in people? Now I'm not talking about church because the next category is that of religious or religion. Spiritually, what have you observed about people? Are they, are, are they not as concerned or into their spiritual lives and development? Have they become more carnal, uh, more worldly, less concerned about the life that they live? What changes are you noticing in people in 2020? So let me say this, the changes that are taking place in, in people in 2020 is simply gonna bleed over in the year 2021. One thing that some of those researchers and those who kind of study human behavior are even looking at the church, they're saying all the changes that we're seeing in people is something that has been happening gradually over time and what the coronavirus has done is simply accelerated the changes that we can see observed in people. Those of us, if you're like me, we've been around the mountain a few times and we've seen some gradual changes, even in church, you know, and it's been gradual, 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 gradual. But now it's going to be some quick changes. And I want us to be observant of some things going around us. That next category speaks about religious. What are some religious changes that are going through? I was reading a document today that uh, it was speaking about the changes in churches that we're seeing. It, it speaks about four of every five churches have gone back to meeting uh, in some type of way. Uh, the churches in this particular country. And um, the churches that have gone back to meeting are now attracting about 50% uh, of the people that were attending their churches before. And uh, in some of the, uh, the instances, it's only about maybe 35% of the people that are supporting the church financially. At first, it was a boom where people who never supported the church were given to support the church when the pandemic first hit. But now the notice is that there's been a, a, a pulling away of financial support to churches. And so you may have observed some changes in people. The next category is that of political. We know that uh, in the political environment, everything is wide open. There's no more undercover uh, people, you will know where they stand from Jump Street. And so that, that can be a change. It used to be that they were maybe more private with their political views, but now you maybe can hear some more outgoing and some boldness going forth as far as changes in people's politics. Then I have their values and morals. And uh, values and morals listed there. What changes are you observing? as people, um, maybe some of the things that they value, that, 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 you know, wholesome values, morals, good morals. But now, have you noticed a change? I think that'd be a good conversation piece. What changes have you noticed in your coworkers? Some of the conversations I hear from some of you, um, some of your coworkers are not as faithful as they were before. They're taking more sick days or not coming to work as regularly as they were coming before. What changes have you seen in people's temperament? By that, I mean things like patience. Are, there, are they more irritable? Uh, do, are their experience, are they being more patient with you, more, more kind, more gentle uh, in the midst? Or is it the opposite that we see in people's temperament? Are they more uh, uh, short-tempered? Do they become flustered easily than maybe you noticed them before? And again, I think this is something to do with our emotional mental health 
also. But I want you to spend some time observing for uh, what you see in people around you or people in general. And we're almost towards the end. Question number four. Woohoo. All right. Here's a kind of a Christmas type of question. What are the hopes and fears in your life as you prepare for Christmas? This may be something that you would only share with yourselves. But again, there's that Christmas song, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. And so as we are on the doorstep of Christmas 2020, what are some of your hopes and what are some of your fears as you prepare for this Christmas season? I've just listed some examples here. Some hopes could possibly be things like you hope to see the end of the coronavirus. You hope to see the reopening of church, of our church in particular. You hope to see the full opening of schools rather than a hybrid learning system. You want to see less division in our area <clears throat> and less division in our nation. Maybe that's something that you want to, that you have a hope to see that. Maybe that, that's a part of your prayer. Maybe you hope to see uh, people giving their lives to Jesus Christ, coming to Jesus, surrendering unto him, to live for Jesus. Maybe that's your hope. Maybe you're hoping for a closer family, even as your family has had to have been somewhat separated for the last uh, 10 months. Maybe you hope to see your family growing closer as you move through Christmas 2020. Or maybe you hope to see people growing closer to God. Hmm. And so you can think about this and you can list your own hopes. Some of the possible fears I've just listed as examples. You can fear others catching the coronavirus, make you know somebody else catching it, or you catching catching coronavirus. Maybe you fear an increase of crime. I know that we are seeing that in our area now. Maybe there's a fear of an increase of substance abuse. We're definitely seeing more and more of that in, in our area. Again, people are drinking more alcohol. Uh, we hear of the drug use that abounds. And again, when there is that, 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 that hurt, that wound, that emotional longing, that mental uh, longing, uh, people without the necessary skills life skills turn to substances and abuse substances. And that's a fear for us. Another fear could be the lack of closeness in family, lack of closeness in community. Will this set up precedence in our families or our community that we're just not going to be as close as we have been? That could be a fear. Maybe mental health issues with our own lives or our families or someone around us. Maybe you fear people falling away from the church, falling away from God, just um, turning away from God and living like they would want to live. Maybe that's a fear. And so as you prepare to move through Christmas 2020, what are your hopes and fears? Just wanted to give you a few examples there. And then the fifth question is really a question that we're just want to gain a, a remind ourselves of what Advent is. And so the question is, what does Advent 2020 mean to you? And I give just a little background there. The, the season of Advent lasts for four Sundays leading up to Christmas. This past Sunday was the first Sunday of Advent. The word Advent comes from a Latin word that means coming, coming. In the fourth and fifth centuries, Christians in Spain and France and France used this time to prepare new Christians for baptism on Epiphany, which is January the 6th. Uh, from those of you who may come from a Catholic background, uh, you, can, you are familiar with what Epiphany is. Sometimes uh, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with it, this is the date that they start making king cakes, okay? If you can't refer to uh, Epiphany in any other way, that's the first day that king cakes go on sale. I'm just saying somebody can relate to that. All right, continuing on. It is a celebration of the wise men coming to see Jesus and declaring him king. That's the Epiphany. 
And so you have the king cake in there. Oh, well. Advent symbolizes the present situation of the church in these last days as we wait for the return of Christ in glory. So the church doing Advent looks back upon Christ's coming in celebration while at the same time looking forward to the coming of Christ's return. He's come to earth once, and according to scripture, he's coming back for his church. And so this Advent can be a time of celebrating and looking forward to, there'll be a day that we'll no longer have to deal with the coronavirus, nor sickness, nor disease. When we go meet the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we're gonna take on a new body and we can celebrate that uh, that time of looking forward, okay? So we have an opportunity now for a time of reflection. We can use the next four weeks preparing the way for the Lord uh, in our lives. We can celebrate Advent, but this time can be a celebration of our coming into the knowledge of his will for our lives in 2020 and beyond as we move through this year 2020. So just some simple background information that's there. And again, <clears throat> Advent for 2020 for me. Maybe you can just list some goals, some things, some thought patterns that you may, uh, that you may have uh, with that. And so uh, we simply uh, highlight that uh, for you that you can use this document as you would see fit uh, as a way to ready yourselves for this Christmas season, I think it can be beneficial indeed. So next Wednesday night, we want to spend some time um, maybe communicating some things about uh, some of these questions and how we look at it and some things that we are observing. And then in two Wednesday nights, we'll have a professional counselor with us uh, to help us maneuver our, our mental health, um, our uh, any depression issues or just how to maneuver uh, through the holiday season, having uh, dealt with uh, 2020, with the hurricanes, with the coronavirus, with the violence across the nation, the racial unrest uh, and the like. And so that becomes uh, a key piece for us in that. Okay. So um, 